Anybody ever had a time in your life where you felt you had no one around you to keep you safe? And people will tell you, look to God. He's there for you. But naturally, down here, it's sometimes hard in our natural state to feel like God is really there because you can't see him, you can't touch him, you can't feel him. But tangibly, you can't feel him, but you know, he's there. So just want you to know that in the midst of everything that you're going through, God will keep you safe. He will keep you comforted. He will keep you if you let him. You have to let him safe in his arms. Give your pastor a hand, everybody. Give your pastor a hand. Pastor Hopkins. him the most that's why I'm saved that's why I'm saved that's why I'm saved saved in his arms Anybody know about storms in your life? And the billows, and the billows, they seem to keep rolling, 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 rolling. I'm glad he delivered me. 
I'm glad he kept me. I'm glad he never left me. I'm glad he sustained me. I'm glad. I'm so glad. So glad. So glad. So glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. He shall hide me. go back a little bit? Y'all want to go back? Let's go back. Since I met she been a burning oh such a burning deep down within I From day to day, as I walk, I walk along this old narrow way since I met Jesus. There's been a change. Soul of mine makes me want to run on, shout hallelujah to the end. Thank you, Lord. His yoke is easy, his yoke is easy. Burdens are light, burdens are light. Walk well, walk where Jesus leads me. Always, I'll always be right. I've got to cherish, I've got to cherish as I'm running. Gotta keep running with haste and by His grace. I know I'll make it, I'll make it home someday, yeah, his yoke is easy, his 
joke is easy His burdens are light Burdens are light And as I walk well Walk where Jesus leads me I'll always be right I'll always be right I've got to cherish I've got to cherish As I'm running Gonna keep running with haste And by His grace I know I'll make it And by His grace I know I'll make it By His grace I make it, I make it home someday, home someday, I make it home someday, I make it home by His grace, by His favor, I make it home. I'll make it home And by His grace I know I'll make it I'll make it home someday Come on, bless and praise our God there's a praise in you, you ought to let it out. Give God thanks for all of his wonderful and many, many blessings. I got any blessed folks in the house. I know some people that know that God has been good to you. Come on, let's celebrate our God on today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Will you help me celebrate the singing gift of our dear brother, Brother Jeremy Randolph? Come on, show him some love. He blessed us again on today. Amen. We're grateful to have our preachers and officers and got some mothers in the house. Amen. Beautiful mothers in the house. Thank God for Mama Fat and Aunt May. Amen. Amen. And to our officers and deacons and to everyone, we thank you so much for your presence today. If you're able to stand, please stand for the reading, reverence, and respect for the word of God. First Kings chapter 1. First Kings chapter 1. Verses 1 through 34. 1 Kings chapter 4. Verses 1 through 34. Y'all ready to get your reading in? Friend, trust you've already read. Let me just read in your hearing this last verse of verse 34. 1 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 through 34, but I want to just read this last verse for the sake of time. And you all promise me you will read these verses today. Amen. And there came of all the people to hear the wisdom of Solomon from all kings of the earth which had heard of his wisdom. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to take text with the subject, what everybody wants. What everybody wants. Regardless of your race, your nationality, your ethnic background, your political affiliation, your religious stance. There are something and some things that are universal that all of us want. Black or white, Hispanic or Asian, there is something that all of us desire and that we want, and I can even push the envelope and say that we need. 
all of us want, and this is not in any particular order, health care, affordable health care. When we get sick, we want to be able to not break the bank because of an illness. Because the truth of the matter is, if we continue to live, sickness is on the agenda. And we want to have health care that's not breaking the bank, that's not robbing us and breaking us of all our savings. Everybody would agree we want good health care. We, we want a good, safe environment to raise our children. All of us want our children to be protected and to grow and thrive in a safe environment. We want careers and job opportunities. We want to be able to advance. We want employment that, that that's not always on the ground level. We want employment that will allow us to take care of family, to take care of ourselves. All of us want a good opportunity for employment. We want a quality education. Don't matter what zip code you're from. We, we, we want an education that is equitable to that in the suburbs. We want an educational system that just because I live in a certain zip code, that, that I don't have the quality of education. We want good education. We want more than anything, help me out, is equality. You ain't got to treat me special. You ain't got to treat me like I'm more than anybody else. But just be fair. And treat me with equality and fairness. How do we get there? Politicians all the time promise to get us there. And we only end up with the same old, same old. Many times we are misinformed. Many times we don't even care to be informed. We just see a name we familiar with and we vote not understanding or knowing what that person stand for. But all we see is a name that is familiar. And we keep getting the same old saying. Even in the religious realm, where there are some religious movements and those that stand in the pulpit that promises certain things, only to have our aspiration and dreams and goals to end up disappointed and in despair. How do we get to what everybody need and want. I don't know how y'all feel about it, but I want to get to that place in Scripture. For the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. I want to lay down in green pastures. I want to be led by the still water. I need my soul to be restored. I, I want to get to that place in life. How do we get there? Y'all interested? Y'all give me just, just 15, 20 Baptist minutes and I'll be out of your way. But because I, I, I won't what, what I read in scripture. I, I want what I see in the lives of others. I, I want to have what everybody desires and needs. There are some fundamental things that everybody desires and 
needs. Well, we come to Solomon again. Solomon begins his administration. He is the son of King David, and we know that King David has now transitioned. King David has died. Now the heir to the throne is Solomon. Solomon is reigning king, but one of the most impressive things about Solomon that Solomon did not require wealth. He made a request for wisdom. Solomon, understand, if you know something, you'll have something. God was so impressed with Solomon's prayer that he gave him both wealth and wisdom. Solomon know if his Ministration is going to be successful. I need the wisdom of God. And oh, you should have been here at 8 o'clock. We talked about divine wisdom. Lord, give me divine wisdom. I've got some decisions to make. I've got some choices to make. And let's face it, y'all. We don't know what tomorrow holds. God, I need to make the right move. I need to walk in the right step. I want to be in cadence with your will and way. Is there anybody besides me who have discovered you're not as smart as you thought you were? Boy, I thought I could parent. I, I knew once I got a child, I was going to show the world how to parent. But the Lord had a Trey Hopkins in my future. And Trey Hopkins taught me how to pray. He taught me how to look to the Lord. He taught me how to put a child in the Lord's hand. I ain't by myself in yet. I thought once I got married, I was going to show the world how to be a good husband. But it wasn't long before I discovered, Lord, I need you. I can't do this by myself. And it only took me a couple of days as pastor. Watching my pastor, he made it look so easy. But it took me a, just a few days to discover, Lord, I need your divine wisdom and help. We cannot make it without the favor of God. We need the blessings of the Almighty. And God gives this favor to Solomon. Skip down, if you will, if you got your Bibles up, and look what wisdom God gives Solomon. Verse 32, Solomon writes 3,000 Proverbs. Not only does he write 3,000 Proverbs, but he got some music in him. He composed over 1,005 songs. Solomon is... Equated or Solomon is uh, uh, acquainted with Buntney. And I got some folks that went to school know what Buntney is. That is the study of plant life. Solomon could look at a tree and flower and tell you what kind it is. Not only was he acquainted with Buntney, he knew zoology. Zoology is the study of animal life. He knew the characteristics of the animal. God gave him that wisdom. God gave him that understanding. I praise God. I give God a mighty praise for wisdom and understanding. If you've ever called my office, if you've ever sat in counseling with me, I want you to know while you are speaking, Matter of fact, while you're on the way, you know what I'm doing? 
I'm praying, saying, Lord, give me wisdom. Wisdom is what we need. So here it is, chapter 4, Solomon begins his administration. Four points I want to give you here in this chapter. I give you a bonus point so you all thank God you're a member of New Hope. We don't just give you three points. I give you four points. Here is my first point. That from verses 1 through 19, and y'all promise me y'all going to read this. From verses 1 through 19, Solomon is getting his administration together. He's getting his people in place. Any leader know you can't do it by yourself. You need some help. You can't make it by yourself. You need some good people around you. Now, a person that's walking in divine wisdom is not always the smartest person in the room. They just wise enough to know people who have certain gifts in certain areas, and you want to surround yourself with people who have wisdom themselves. When I was in school, I was never the smartest in school. But if you found me, I was hanging around what they would call then the nerds. Nerds were my partners. I hung around people who was smarter than me. There's so much you could pick up on rubbing shoulders with people with wisdom. Matter of fact, I monitor the people that are in my circle because if you are the smartest in your circle, you need to find another circle. You don't need to be the smartest in your circle. Matter of fact, you don't need to be the richest in your circle. If you're the richest in your circle, you need a new set of friends. I done blessed somebody already. Because you need somebody who can help you. We all need some help. Y'all gonna sit there like y'all don't need any help. Listen, if you want to find out who you are, just look at who you hang around. The people you hang around is a reflection of who you are. And Solomon does a wise thing. He gets wise people around him so that he can have a successful administration. So this become the first point, is getting the right people, getting godly people around. You mean you got some people that'll party with you, but you ain't got nobody that'll pray with you? You need to have some godly people. You mean tell me you got some folk that go down to Tunica with you? but won't go to church with you. You need to have some godly people in your life. Solomon is wise enough to surround himself with the right people. You know, when you're young, you try to make friends. But when you get my age, you ain't sure looking for no new friends. Come on, I know you got your mask on, but you ought to wink at me here. You ain't trying to have new friends. You got enough family and friends to deal with with their crazy self. You ain't trying to get nobody else. But every now and then, God will have somebody to just step in your life. And you ought to give him a strong praise 
that he send you the right people in your life when you need it. I celebrate the wisdom God sent me. Because you ain't wise, you know, more than likely you ain't in my circle. I want some wise people who can give me wise counsel. But then secondly, you're going to like this one. Not only godly personnel, but godly prosperity. Verses 20, 21, 22, and 23. We see the prosperity of King Solomon. God allowed him to prosper. And what you need is godly prosperity. Please stay with me, New Hope. You heard the, the statement, all money ain't good money. All money is not good money. Some money, some blessings are cursed. You don't do it, don't do it now, but you just write it as a footnote. There's a documentary out called The Curse of the Lottery. Check it out. There are people who have won millions of dollars. And I know you sitting there saying, boy, if I could just get my hand on a few more meals, I would be all right. But these are people who have attained, acquired money. They ended up losing their mind. They ended up committing suicide. And it tells me to tell you that money is not everything. Money does not equate to prosperity. I know some people, you know some people with some money, and they are as miserable as they can be. And look at you with your broke self. You got something that money can't buy. Oh, bless his name. Can I give you just one thing money can't buy? Money can't buy you joy. You, it can pay for a trip, but when you get there, it still won't give you joy. It will buy you things, but how many know things won't bring you joy? It will put people in your life, but people in your life don't give you joy. I got a testimony. Who riding with me this morning? I got a testimony. This joy that I have, the world didn't give to me. And the world yeah, can't take it away. Oh, bless his name. That's why I sing when I don't even have a voice. That's why I shout when it ain't nothing funny. That's why I run and dance because God has given me, given me joy. And I don't let your sour look and your frustration take my joy. It took me too long to get it. I learned that if I speak and you don't speak, I'll just keep on walking and keep on rejoicing because I've come to know that this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Solomon has godly people. Solomon has Godly prosperity. But then thirdly, Solomon has godly peace. Let, let me just read just a little bit. Look, look at verse, verse 4. The latter part of verse 24. I'm sorry, verse 24. It says, and he had peace on all sides. Round about him. Listen, y'all. I've lived long enough 
that if something costs me my peace, that costs too much. I'm not going to let anything or anybody take my peace. Lord, I thank you for some peace. I sleep at night. I'm able to eat and digest my food. I'm able to rest at home. The phone can ring and I'm not jumping. Somebody can knock at the door and I'm not running because God has given me peace. And I'm going to tell you what real peace look like. Real peace is when trouble is all around. Now, you know from a human standpoint, you're supposed to be pushing the panic button, but the Lord will give you a peace that surpasses. I got some Bible readers in here. All understand. God has given Solomon the wisdom to have peace all around. Because when you live in fear, it robs you of your sleep. Robs you really of your rest. Because some of you are sleeping, but you ain't resting. That's why you're still waking up tired. You hadn't had rest. Only God can give you rest. Somebody knows something about him taking you in his arms and rocking you. Oh, I celebrate the peace of God. Here recently in this war in the Middle East, the news, national news was sharing this young lady who was about 12 years old. She mentioned how all through the night and day that they heard planes flying and bombs being dropped. And this little 12-year-old girl made this statement. She says, nobody should live like that. Nobody should have to live in fear of every time you hear noise. You jump. But I'm grateful that God will give you a quality of peace that the world cannot take away. Is there anybody who can give God a strong praise for the peace that God has given. I don't know how y'all feel about it, but I thank God for my peace. I'm trying to leave this point. I know what it's like to have chaos, but I thank God for peace. Ooh, we. I'm going to shout my own self. Peace feels good, y'all. It's good to be able to lay down at night. And y'all, I, can I testify here I sleep good? I have to always snooze at least one time before I get up. I don't get up on the first ring. I always got to have a little snooze before I jump out of bed. I just thank God for peace. But let me leave you when I tell you. How does Solomon come to this? How does Solomon get all of this? How does he get the right people? How does he have prosperity and peace? Well, we know it's all the grace of God. But there was something in his request that he required wisdom. My last point is godly prudence. Verse 29 through 34. Solomon has so much godly prudence that everybody comes to him to get an answer to their question. 
And I know I'm talking to somebody. They always calling you. Wanting to know what's your thoughts. They always bothering you. Want to know how you feel about this. Well, first of, God, first of all, thank God you got somebody in your life you can go to and ask questions. But then if you are the one people are leaning on, thank God that he has favored you with wisdom. You do know common sense ain't all that common, y'all. It is a gift from God. And you ought to thank God for divine wisdom that leads to peace, prosperity, and picking the right folks. Because let's face it, y'all, we didn't make it on our own. We are not doing it by ourselves. We got it because God has been gracious. Now don't sit there and act like you've been smart and you are so intelligent and that you have always just been in the right place at the right time. No, Negro, tell the truth. God did it. Can I tell you, one of the highest crimes in the academy, the highest crime in the academy is plagiarism. That when you commit plagiarism, you are taking the writings of somebody else and attaching it to your own. Well, let me speak to somebody in here who's plagiarizing. There's no such thing as a self-made woman, a self-made man. You didn't make it on your own. You're not standing by yourself. It was God who made a way. Is there anybody besides me Wanna wanna do the paper right and put a footnote down to our source. Can I tell you who the source is? Where I am, God brought me. Who I am, God taught me. What I have, God gave me. And who I am. God made me. Is there anybody in this place want to acknowledge who the source is? Well, come on. Help me close this message. If the Lord has done it for you, somewhere I read, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I, I, I know you got your mask on, but a few of us know that we can't sit here silently. We got to acknowledge who the source is. God has given me wisdom and understanding. I wasn't lucky, it wasn't coincidental, but God made a way out of no way. Is there anybody in this place can give him a strong praise? God gave you wisdom. And you can give him praise for guiding your footsteps. Is there anybody want the Lord 
to order your steps guide me I said guide me thou great Jehovah through this barren this barren land hung hung am weak but thou almighty hold me that's what I tell him hold me anybody know he'll hold me hold me hold me with thy powerful hand bread bread of the heaven lead me till I won't no more I, I need you to guard my footstep be a light unto my path be a lamp unto my feet I gotta trust in the Lord and lean not to my own understanding but in all come on help me say all in all of my ways you direct my path so I tell him lead me guide me along along the way for if you lead me I will not fall is there anybody can give him a strong praise looking over your life you see the hand of God leading you and guiding you before I step in that relationship before I step in that situation before I take that job God God lead me God me thank you Lord for divine wisdom I need to know how to pick my friends I need to know how to walk in prosperity I need your peace and the only way I can get it send down your wisdom and knowledge I made up my mind I, 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 I ain't gonna move until you speak speak Lord speak Lord speak Lord speak Lord if there are anybody needing to speak speak Lord speak Lord Speak, Lord. Speak to my heart. Speak to my mind. Speak to my spirit. Speak to my soul. I, 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 I ain't gonna move until you speak. Speak, Lord. Thou servant in the listing. Speak, Lord. I need my next move to be my my best move speak Lord I don't know which way to turn I don't know which direction to go speak Lord help me somebody speak Lord come on help me open your mouth where you are tell the Lord Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak in my home. Speak on my job. Speak in my spirit. I need, I need, I need you to speak 
I don't know what I'm doing, but speak. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. Speak, Lord. The wisdom of God will lead to salvation. The wisdom of God will lead to success. The wisdom of God will give you satisfaction. I need God to speak to my heart. There are times in which I need to move distractions so I can hear him clearly. Because discerning God's will ain't always easy, y'all. And I need to know his will for my life. You need to know his will for your life. And it's going to lead to your salvation. It's going to lead to your success. And it's going to lead to your satisfaction. At the end of the day, you will have a peace that surpass all understanding. Even if it don't go the way you want it to go. Know that ultimately salvation will come. Success will come. And satisfaction will be yours. Come on, stand all over the house. Speak to my heart, you know. We invite you to come. If you're here out of church, meet us at this altar.